All right, so let's take a look at how we can incorporate the HEngine data attribute as well as tell certain nodes to automatically load their geometry. All right, as you've seen throughout this course, we're going in, we're selecting certain nodes all the time, and we're telling them to auto load their geometry so we can see the results inside of the scene view. Well, I'd really like to just do that automatically inside of my top network. All right, and I'd also like to kind of filter out the list in that drop down of all the different top nodes that are in my top network. And so we actually have a way to do that using the HEngine data attribute. Okay, so let's take a look at how to do that inside of Houdini. Okay, so what I wanted to do is show really quickly uh, just what I'm talking about in terms of the auto cook and the HEngine data attribute. So in the latest version of the PDG asset link here inside of Unity in the Houdini engine, we have this checkbox called auto cook and we have this checkbox called HEngine data. Well, if we're using HEngine data, basically what it means is that we're filtering out based on an attribute that we attach to our top nodes. It's allowing us to then filter this list. So only the ones that we're really interested in um, show up. Okay. And we can also make it so that it automatically loads a particular geometry. In this case, we're constantly so far throughout this course, we're constantly setting this auto load res results. And I really just want to set that inside of Houdini when I save out my HDA that contains my top network. And so what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to use that HEngine data attribute to do that for us. And then we can also make, you know, this whole thing cook or auto cook. And this allows us then to start to change things in our level dynamically. And what will happen is PDG will pick up those changes automatically for us and start to cook certain parts of the level where things have changed. All right. And this is one of the core features to PDG and to making you more efficient while you're working with your procedural system. All right. So let's jump back over into Houdini and take a look at how we get the H engine data hooked up. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do in order to take advantage of the H engine data is to jump into our top network here. That's inside of our HDA. And what we want to do is we actually want to go and add an attribute to an individual node here. So what we've been doing so far, right, is we've been going to the terrain scatter over here inside of unity, right? And we're, we've been going and saying show results and auto load results, right? And we've also have been having to go through and select it from the list over here. All right. And I really don't want to have to do that. And so what's great about this is they've added in another attribute that allows us to set this automatically. So with the terrain scatter node, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the node itself, the HDA processor node. I'm going to go up to this little gear up here and I'm going to go and select edit parameter interface like so. All righty. Now we're not actually adding UI to an HDA. Okay. We're adding more UI to the current node, just this individual node, this instance of this particular node. Okay. So it's not going to go with all HDA processors. All right. And so what we want to do is I actually want to add to the generation. Well, actually we could put it up here at the very top, just to keep it nice and organized. So I'm going to go and add a, a string parameter here and what we need to do is we need to call this a very specific name. So it, the name itself, the, the name of the particular parameter is going to be the H engine data parameter. All right. And I'm just going to set the label to H engine data. Now this is just a label. This isn't you know crucial. You could actually name it anything you want. The very important part is to make sure that this particular name is that exact name. So H engine data. Okay. And so with that, uh, what we can do is we can set the defaults for our particular parameter by going to the channels tab up here. And what we can do is we can say that we want to show this node. All right. So we want it to show up in the list. Okay. So if I go in here, so I want it to show up in this top node list. I don't want all the nodes, right? By using show, I'm saying this particular node is the only node that needs to be considered to be in this list. All the others, you know, they're just kind of, you know, doing work for me. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go back to Houdini here and we're going to move on to the next tag. So the next tag is auto load like so. So by having the show and auto load, what we're saying is that 
the node itself is going to show up in the list inside of HEngine data. And the auto load is going to make sure that we we're automatically setting the node to load its geometry. So the result or the output of our top node. Okay, so we want to load that geometry. Cool. So with that, let's just hit apply and accept. There we go. And you can see now we have this H engine data property or parameter, I should say. And the name of that parameter is H engine data. And we're telling it to show it in the list and to load its geometry or the output geometry. Cool. So let's go up by hitting U on the keyboard and let's save our top network HDA. And then let's get this inside of Unity. So to do that, I need to go to my HDF folder here. All right, so we're going to go in here. I'm going to select my top node. I'm going to show it in the Explorer. And then I'm going to uh, open up my folder. So what I'm going to do is go to my desktop. Let's just open this in a new window. And let's go and dive into all of this stuff here. We're going to get the HDA. So I want the current top network. There we go. Cool. So let's go back into Unity, let that rebuild, and then we'll actually hit the rebuild button here. And always make sure to reassign or at least check these guys. So I'm going to reassign my gameplay area here. And I, I am actually going to turn this back on just to make sure that we pick this up. Cool. And we should rebuild that guy as well. There we go. Very cool. All right. So the next step that we need to do is we just need to go back and we need to refresh our PDG network. And you can see that it's going to still show us everything. And that's just because we need to, to actually click the using H engine data checkbox. And then if we hit refresh like so, you'll notice that everything actually went away. And I really wanted to show this because this kind of threw me for a loop at first too. But what we have to do is we actually need to assign the same H engine data to the top network as well, because you could have multiple top networks inside of your um, HDA that we're using as our kind of master control for our level, our procedural system. All right. So with that, let's jump back into Houdini over here. All right. And uh, all we need to do is do that same thing for our actual top network. Okay, so I'm actually going to jump up to the top network here and I'm going to go and edit the parameter interface for this guy and really just do the same exact thing. So I'm going to drag a string in here and I'm going to call that parameter H engine data. And again, for the label H engine data, just so I know. And for this default, though, all I'm going to do is just type in show because obviously we're not auto loading our whole top network. OK, we just want to show this top network. And that's the reason why uh, we're not seeing anything here inside of Unity is because we literally just told the whole system not to show any top network. All right. So we need to, to at least show our top network. OK, so with that, let's apply and accept. All right. And we're going to jump up and out and then save our HDA. So we're going to say save node type. All righty. And then let's go back to our folders over here. OK, we're going to copy and paste our top network HDA over the old one inside of Unity. And now what we need to do is just go and rebuild our asset and then go back to our asset link, our PDG asset link and hit refresh. And voila, there we go. Now we get one top network and we just have the one terrain scatter node. And you'll notice that the auto load checkbox is automatically ticked for us. Awesome. So this is really helping us because you know, now we can just skip the whole process of selecting things out of this drop down menu. So let's go and do that for the split terrain. So right here. Okay. So I'm going to, again, select the HDA processor. That is the final result for our split terrain. And because I want to load this particular geometry. And I also want to just show that inside of my PDG asset link inside of unity. All right. And so I'm going to click and drag a string out here like so and put it at the top just so I can see it. And again, type in H engine data like so. And then again, you can make, make the label whatever you want, but honestly, this seems the most logical and practical and most efficient. And again, I want to show 
and auto load this particular node, all right? So basically our split terrain and our terrain scatter nodes are the ones that produce the final geometry. All these other nodes in here, they're really just processing things for us, all right? These two nodes are the ones that are actually generating the final level currently. Okay, cool. So let's jump up and out and let's select this node and save it. Okay. And then again, let's overwrite the current version that we have in our Unity project with the new one that we just saved out from Houdini. We'll go back to Unity and we will rebuild our top network HDA and also make sure that our areas back in. There we go. Cool. And then we'll go back to the PDG asset link and hit refresh once again. And you can see now we have both the split terrain and the terrain scatter uh, selected here or exposed in the list. And they both have their auto load automatically turned on. So this is awesome because now what I can do is I can just cook this without having to worry about whether or not I left one of these guys on. So let's do that. Let's hit cook output and wait for this to go. All right, there we go. So we just recooked it and we did it without having to have all those other nodes in the, in the way. So I think it's a much faster workflow and I think it really helps out, you know, just focusing on just the nodes that you're really interested in. All right. And again, so all we need to do was just add that H engine data attribute or parameter uh, to the parameter interface for whatever node you actually want to show. All right, so I'm going to leave you guys there. And in the next lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to start to build out a path HDA so we can, you know, draw paths from one area to another in our level. All right, thanks so much.